What's happening? Who's with you? Who's participating? Is someone going to doctor's appointments with you? What's going on? All right, folks, let's dive right in. Today we have Mr. Adel accusing Ms. Jones of committing paternity fraud. He claims that she tricked him into signing their daughter's birth certificate, only to find out later that she cheated on him before getting pregnant. Woo, talk about a messy situation. Mr. Adel, you are here today to prove Ms. Jones committed paternity fraud. You claim Ms. Jones duped you into signing her daughter's birth certificate, only to find out after her child was born that she cheated prior to getting pregnant. You say she broke the terms of your relationship, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. So, here's the deal. Mr. Adel and Ms. Jones were in a swinging relationship. Yep, you heard that right, folks. They were swingers. Now, for those of you who don't know what swinging is, it's when couples agree to have sexual relations with other people outside of their relationship. But there's a catch. They have to do it together, like a tag team. It's a wild world out there. You admit to cheating, but say you are 100% positive Mr. Adel is the biological father of your two-month-old daughter, Jessela. Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Adel, what do you mean she broke the terms of the relationship? Your Honor, we have we have certain rules. We're swingers, you know, and... Uh, okay. And she went outside of the relationship. She cheated on me. Apparently, Mr. Adel and Ms. Jones had some rules in place for their swinging adventures. No going outside the relationship unless the other person is present and always, always use protection. Seems like a fair deal, right? Well, Buckle up, because things are about to get way more complicated. Cheated too, though. I did out of spite. You did it out of spite. You yeah. feel like he cheated. Your Honor, she's, she swears to God I cheated, and I, 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 don't, I don't cheat. Oh, there is a picture in my bed with someone else. A picture of Mr. Adel in the bed with somebody else? Your bed? Yes, Your Honor. And that's why you cheated, because you saw that picture, so then you went out and did it. Absolutely. So we, our swinging couple decided to spice things up by inviting another man into their bedroom. They put an ad online, looking for a third wheel to join them. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Ms. Jones wasn't too thrilled about the idea of another woman joining the party, so they settled for a man. But guess what? She wasn't really into it. Poor Mr. Adel. He thought he was doing something nice for his lady, only to realize that she wasn't feeling the vibe. I, well, I really don't, but I, I don't know if I want to know. Who finds the people? How, how does that start? Um, well, the way we did it was, uh, we put an ad out online. An uh, ad online? Yes. We, we what would an ad like this say? It, uh, couples, uh, Go ahead, you know what it says, you know you wrote it. Fast forward a bit, and Mr. Adel finds out that Ms. Jones cheated on him with one of his friends. That's gotta hurt, but get this, she only confessed to it a month ago. Can you imagine carrying that secret for so long? The tension in that relationship must have been off the charts. Compromise, you know, and it, it's not a big deal to me. It's all it's all the same, sex is sex, and it's all exciting, you know? So, I mean, it, it was... <laughs> I'm not quite there yet on that testimony, but I'm gonna keep listing. So, Ms. Jones, you agree to have a Another man come into your bedroom. Honestly, I was hoping that he would stop it before it got that far. That he wouldn't really want another man to have intercourse with me. So now we have a baby in the mix. Ms. Jones claims that Mr. Adel is the biological father of their two-month-old daughter, Jasala. But Mr. Adel has his doubts. He's convinced that the baby might not be his because of Ms. Jones's infidelity. Talk about a paternity bombshell. The night that that happened, you know, we uh, we invited the gentleman over. Um, we had some drinks to loosen up. You you know, uh, more more for her case because she's she had had no. So how does this work? They just ring the doorbell and they're like, "Hi, I'm the no, swinger." No, we, we, no, we 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 had some drinks. She had told me that she was comfortable. All right, folks, it's time to get down to the nitty gritty. Mr. Adel wants answers, and he's come to paternity court to get them. Will he find out if he's the father, or will this case take an unexpected turn? Let's find out. Mr. Adel, you are the father. I told you. Makes you emotional. Yes, it does. Very emotional. And why is that? Because I I, I built a relationship with a child, and I'd, I'd like to continue. So today we're diving into the case of Brooks versus Gooley. Mr. Brooks is here to prove that he is the father of Miss Gooley's 18-year-old son, Mr. McDonald. But Miss Gooley, well, she's got a bombshell of her own. She admits to cheating on Mr. Brooks and believes that he may not be the biological father. Hold on to your seats, folks, because this one's about to get wild. Mr. Brooks, you've summoned your ex-girlfriend, Miss Gooley, to paternity court to prove that you are the father of her 18-year-old son, Mr. McDonald. Yes, Your Honor. Miss Gooley, you admit you cheated on Mr. Brooks all those years ago and are here today to prove to Mr. Brooks that 
he is not the father of your son. Yes, Your Honor. Now let's get into the nitty gritty of this relationship. Mr. Brooks and Miss Gooley were together for a whopping 10 years. But hold up, folks. It wasn't exactly a committed relationship. Nope, it was more like a we're together, but we're not faithful kind of deal. This is starting to sound like a recipe for disaster. Both of you are desperate for these answers because you've recently been reunited with Mr. McDonald, whom you lost custody of at the tender age of one. Mr. Brooks, why do you believe Mr. McDonald is your son? The day he was born, I took her to the hospital. I drove her to the hospital. I was there. I watched him cut her open. I watched him pull my baby out. Miss Gooley? Oh, Miss Gooley. Did you ever tell Mr. Brooks during the pregnancy that he might not be the father? Nopa, she kept him in the dark, folks. She let him believe that he was the biological father the entire time. Now, that's a secret that's about to blow up in her face. The entire pregnancy? Yes, Your Honor, I did. I, um... Why is that? Because he wants to be there for, for my child, but he, he knew that there was another man that was no, at I my did. house all the time. That's a lie. And he used to take the take Fred to work. And How you gonna take to me when I have my own damn car? Uh, Mr. Brooks, Excuse I need you to watch your language. I'm sorry. So wait a minute. There was another man that was always at your house. And here's where things get even juicier, folks. Miss Gooley had another man in her life while she was with Mr. Brooks. Mr. Brooks believes that this other man could potentially be Mr. McDonald's biological father. Can you imagine the tension between these two men? Been having these pictures with me from for 17 years. She don't have none. Matter of fact, I don't have I got about 60 pictures, and she's not in none of them. These are pictures you carried for 17 years, yes. believing that you are Mr. McDonald's biological father. Yes, you are. Miss Gooley claims that this other man was just a friend, but come on now, we all know what that means. Mr. Brooks ain't buying it, and he's convinced that this other man is the real deal. Oh, the suspense is killing me. Who will be revealed as the true father? Will it be Mr. Brooks or this mysterious other man? I can't wait to find out. So let me be clear, you submitted to the court at this time, you were both battling and having significant challenges with drugs. No. no. Her, no. Tell me what you do. It don't but matter. I don't do it now. Yeah. Ultimately, yes. from your home. No. The reason why the my Well, kids, Mr. Brooks, something came. had to be going on because if, in fact, Miss Gooley was struggling at that time with drugs and the children could not be with her. Fast forward to the day that Mr. McDonald was taken away from Mr. Brooks. Oh, the heartbreak. Mr. Brooks vividly remembers that day, folks. The police showed up. DFCS was involved and chaos ensued. Miss Gooley claims that Mr. Brooks called DFCS on her, but he denies it. This this case is getting messier by the minute. Out, you you looked at him and said, is he yours? Yes, I did. She you said that judge. because what, you wanted him to look at the baby and see if he thought it looked like him? Yes, Your Honor. This ain't I, the first I'm a time good he's man. went through some, but yes, you are. Yes, you are. I give you I that. I take I care give of all you that. You an excellent man. But he, he, he claims my daughter, that's not his child. He claims someone else's daughter, that's not his child. Miss Gooley let Mr. Brooks believe that he was the father for all those years. Apparently, she wanted him to be there for her child, but she also knew there was another man in the picture. Talk about playing with fire. This is one tangled web we're dealing with here. And on Facebook, saying that he was my biological father, and I, did, I text back and said, um, okay, I really don't know what to say or what to do because there's another man in my life that thinks he's my father. Mr. Brooks, bless his heart, had been carrying around pictures of Mr. McDonald for a whopping 17 years. He believed with all his heart that he was the father. But wait, folks, there's a twist. Miss Gooley is nowhere to be found in any of those pictures. Not a single one. I didn't want to hear it. I don't see no other man being his father but me. That's it. That's all I got to say about it. That's mine. Miss Gooley, as you stand here in court, are you still convinced that this other gentleman and not Mr. Brooks is Mr. McDonald, your son's biological father? I don't see how he can be. You don't see how Mr. Brooks can be? No, ma'am. And just when you thought things couldn't get any crazier, Miss Gooley drops a bombshell. She claims that Mr. Brooks can't even father a child. But Mr. Brooks ain't backing down, folks. He knows in his heart that he's the father, and he's ready to prove it. Say Mr. Brooks said this, he said this. You admit it in court. We, 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 let's, just, let's just keep it real. You admit it that you told him that he was the father and strung yes, him I along did, because for he, quite I, a long time before you admitted that he may not be the biological father. But he's saying, I, I admitted it last year. That's a lie. That's a lie. I admitted it. Fast forward to the present day, and Mr. McDonald has been reunited with his parents. The emotions are running high, folks. There's tension, excitement, and a whole lot of uncertainty. Will Mr. Brooks finally get the confirmation he's been waiting for? Will Miss Gooley's secret come back to haunt her? It's time for the truth. Mr. Brooks, you are his father. <laughs> All right! How's it feel? Great. <laughs> You're my boy. This is my boy. <laughs> <laughs> Feels good, sir? 
Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You feel real good. <laughs> all right, folks, let's dive into the case of Rayford V's Freeman. This love triangle has all the ingredients for a juicy story. We've got Ms. Rayford, Mr. Freeman, and his fiance, Ms. Triplett. It's a tangled web of relationships. Let's see how this plays out. Ms. Rayford, you say Mr. Freeman's inability to be honest has landed you smack in the middle of a love triangle that produced your eight-month-old son, Terry, whom he now denies. You say that after begging you to have his child, Mr. Freeman abruptly left your relationship, returned to his fiance, and started denying your baby. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Ms. Rayford is accusing Mr. Freeman of denying their eight-month-old son, Terry. She claims that after begging her to have his child, Mr. Freeman abruptly left their relationship and returned to his fiance. Ouch! Now, he's denying the baby, but hold on, because it's about to get even messier. More than a fling who is now obsessed with you and your fiance, Ms. Triplett. <laughs> you claim that during your brief time with Ms. Rayford, she was sleeping with multiple men, and there is no way you are her son's father. Is that correct? Correct, Young. Mr. Freeman, on the other hand, is claiming that Ms. Rayford was nothing more than a fling and is now obsessed with him and his fiance, Ms. Triplett. He even goes as far as saying that she was sleeping with multiple men during their brief time together. You like to clown? Your son will love it. He loves to laugh and play. Play with him and not me. He knows he's a father. It's not an issue of paternity. It's an he issue of him father, being responsible. God. Ms. Triplett, Give me a minute. Miss Miss Rayford, just Jesus look at me. Offense. Listen, listen. I know why you're upset. Lord have mercy. And I'm letting you kind of scream it out because I can see how frustrated you are. I am. I really am. All right, let's hear from Ms. Rayford. She's had enough of Mr. Freeman's denial and is ready to set the record straight. She's confident that Terry is Mr. Freeman's son and wants him to step up and be a responsible father. Terry, and you told him you don't need his stuff. Are you referring to when you brought that dresser thing? Nah, he referring to the stuff that he bought with Pampers clothes and stuff like that. Girl, stop uh, playing. So you know every uh, move that man make, stuff. huh? Nope, Hold I thought on. he made a wrong so. move when he went over there. Hold that on. Oh, you jealous. You wish that was your jealous. son, huh? How can I be you jealous? You wish that was your son, huh? You Ms. Rayford, Ms. Rayford. And how can I be jealous? Ms. Rayford, focus on me. But wait, here comes Ms. Triplett, Mr. Freeman's fiance, with some choice words for Ms. Rayford. Things are heating up real quick. Ladies, ladies, let's bring it down a notch. We're here to find the truth, not to start a fight. Mr. Freeman, why are you here? I'm here today to prove that I'm not Trina's baby daddy. Me and Trina was together. It was only just a flame. Trina was still having sex with multiple guys. Uh, she's obsessed with me. He believes you are, you were still having sex with other people. Is that true? No, it's not true. We met in December. Um, we met on a dating site. Okay, let's get back on track. Ms. Rayford, tell us what Mr. Freeman has done for Terry. Oh, wait, he hasn't done anything? Deadbeat alert. Mr. Freeman, you better have a good explanation for this. I'll send you home. Yes, you can deal with it and get you some medicine. Okay. I might need that. Okay, it, it, we, we can. Yes, I, I've asked you at least two times now. Just stop being ignorant. Huh. <laughs> Just stop! Mr. Freeman claims that he's not Terry's father and that Ms. Rayford was still sleeping with other men during their time together. Hmm, sounds like he's trying to shift the blame. But hey, we're not here to judge, just to uncover the truth. Rayford, so you all decided in February, y'all said, oh, now we're gonna be in a committed relationship. Yes. How do we end up here? Okay, I had to go to California and take care of some business. And so we were living together at the time. So he didn't have money for a plane ticket. And because we were expecting a child, it was, it was not responsible to buy him a plane ticket where he didn't need to go, where he had a job. All right, let's hear Ms. Rayford's side of the story. She met Mr. Freeman on a dating site in December, and they hit it off. But things got complicated when she met another guy around the same time. Oh, the classic love triangle. So now, Ms. Rayford, when you went to California, you were already pregnant. I never, I never saw proof that she was pregnant. She never told you she was pregnant? Never told me. Now, Miss Triplett, do you remember hearing anything about Miss Rayford being pregnant at the end of February? I had heard of it, but he never pertained to me that, he, that she showed any proof. How did you hear it? From Terry and her telling Terry. Miss Rayford moved in with Mr. Freeman in February, and they were planning a future together. But then she had to go to California for some business, leaving Mr. Freeman behind. And that's when things started to go downhill. Distance really did make the heart grow fonder of someone else. So now now we see what's going on. So, that's, so, so Mr. You said Freeman, your man is a liar. hold on. No. Mr. Freeman, yeah, you are going back and forth between these two women all this time. No wonder you so quiet. Hmm. <laughs> but now we know you all both got everything to do with it. While I was gone to California, he was back fraternizing with her, gambling, hoarding, being irresponsible. Hold on tight, folks, because here comes the bombshell. Mr. Freeman admits that he was still with Ms. Triplett during the same time he was involved with Ms. Rayford. Talk about playing both sides. 
sides. This love triangle just got even messier. Who will come out on top? Because by the end of it, by the end of it, I was pregnant. I was finding out I was pregnant. We was caught up. Just it was good. I ain't guy. gonna lie. It's good. It, two minutes at a time is good. That's why I'm here. Oh, you know, I messed up. God forgive me. This is my punishment, and I take that. But I learned my lesson. I'm on birth control, and I'm gonna get baptized because this is just too like hard on here. Ms. Rayford has a calendar that shows a very interesting timeline. It seems that Terry's conception falls right in the window when she and Mr. Freeman were extremely active. If you catch my drift, those special dates like birthdays and Valentine's Day really do leave a mark. You know what? Lean Amen. on the Lord. That's all I can say. Amen. Yes, Lord. So let's go to the next page. <laughs> okay, let's go to the, the next page of your calendar. Okay, so the conception window. Okay, the baby was born November 7th, and I have some more proof of the conception window. Mr. Freeman, however, is still denying everything. He claims that he always used protection, but come on, who are you trying to fool? The evidence is stacking up against you, my friend. It's time to face the music. We sexually active because it was your birthday, his birthday, and Valentine's Day fell all insane. Yeah, that's why I say it's not an issue of paternity because he may lie, she, or he lie, she lie, but that ain't lying. Too. That ain't lying. The, DNA, ain't the DNA test ain't lying. Everything matches up to what I'm saying. I don't have no reason to lie on this man. Listen, listen. All right, it's time for the moment of truth. Judge Lake has the DNA results in hand, and everyone is on the edge of their seats. Will Mr. Freeman be proven wrong, or will Ms. Rayford finally get the validation she's been seeking? Let's find out. Mr. Freeman. Yes. You are not. Keep hope alive, but you're wrong today. You are the father. Ah! That's why you have problems for me. Because something wrong with her, and it's I'm not now. subjecting my child to that. Listen, you're his father, just like Miss Rayford said you were. And you just lie. You you come, you do this to me. Meet Miss Collins, who met Mr. Stone on a dating site and thought he was kind of handsome. They met up and hit it off soon afterwards. But things took a turn for the worse when she revealed she was pregnant. Ms. Collins, you have dragged the defendant to court to prove he is the biological father of your four-year-old daughter, Samara. You say one day of bliss became a lifetime of hell when Mr. Stone up and disappeared when you revealed to him you were pregnant. Is this correct? Yes, Your Honor. And here's Mr. Stone, who claims that Miss Collins never explicitly told him he could be the father. So the details are Miss Collins and Mr. Stone had a few rendezvous, and one thing led to another. They had unprotected sex, and bam, baby Samara was on her way. Mr. Stone, you claim the plaintiff waited two and a half years to tell you that you are Samara's dad, and you are just one of many men who could be the father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Miss Collins tells the court that she did inform Mr. Stone about the pregnancy and the possibility that he could be the father. But Mr. Stone seems to have a different recollection of events. With the, with the flow. Mr. Stone, is this true? Yes, Your Honor. All right. That's how we make babies. <clears throat> so when you met Miss Collins, mm -hmm. did you feel like this was going to turn into a relationship? She wasn't the only person I was with. I wasn't the only person she was with. And I'll just... Was this the only night you all were intimate? There were other I think there was nights. another night. There was another night. Mr. Stone claims that Miss Collins never explicitly told him he could be the father. He thought it was just a casual fling, and he was not the only one she was seeing. These two are weaving one hell of a tangled web. I pick up the phone. It's her. You know, we're talking. She's like, yeah, so I, you know, I just want to let you know, you know, I am pregnant. I said, okay, you know, and, and she said, well, I'll just, I'll just let you know, you know, I'm pregnant. You know, I, I kind of asked her to come hang out. I kind of hinted I wanted her to, you know, come hang out. But she said she was pregnant and basically she couldn't hang out. So she never said, oh, this is your child. She never said that. The plot thickens, my friends. Miss Collins goes on to reveal that there were two other men who could potentially be Samara's father. According to her, she had just broken up with her ex when she found out she was pregnant. She informed both men about the pregnancy and that's where things got a little complicated. I said, hey, I'm pregnant. He said, well, is it mine? And I said, there's a possibility that it might be yours. He didn't deny it. He didn't say, no, that ain't my baby. He didn't do none of that. So after that, he just said, well, you know what? Just keep in touch. And I said, okay, and you keep in touch as well. Make a long story short, uh, he moves to Arizona. And I said, okay, well, keep in touch with me. Now, fast forward two and a half years, and Mr. Stone resurfaces. Miss Collins is convinced he is the father, but Mr. Stone isn't so sure. Mr. Stone presents some evidence to the court, claiming that Miss Collins Collins has been avoiding paternity tests and making excuses. Is he onto something, or is he just trying to avoid responsibility? He would have said to me, and you're the father. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, that's... At what probably... point, then, does it become clear that to you that you're a possibility? It was, like, two and a half years later. She hasn't been crazy, like, throw a brick through my window crazy, but it's like, you know, you can't call me and be like, hey, baby dad. What? You know, <laughs> what? You know, that's the first thing you say is, hey, baby dad? Like, that's kind of, like, it's kind of awkward. You know what I mean? The tension is palpable in the courtroom as Miss Collins passionately defends herself, insisting that Mr. Stone is indeed the father. But will the paternity test bring us the truth we've been waiting for? She looked like my ex. They favored. They really did. So after so long, speculations came up. We got a test done. Come to find out she wasn't his. I said, yeah, I think I probably um, made a misjudged character on the situation. Uh, 2015, I found out that he was back living in the state. And now, folks, it's time for the moment of truth. The paternity test results are in. And we're about to find out if Mr. Stone is the father of little Tamara. Judge Lake, the floor is yours. Mr. Stone, you are the father. What? You are her father. How you feel now? Yeah, it kind of threw me for a loop. I didn't expect that one. You truly believed you were not her biological father? Yes, Your Honor. I truly believe that. But on the bright side, I'm not upset. I'm a little surprised. Meet our plaintiff, Ms. Marsak, who admits to sleeping with not one, but two men around the time she conceived her 11-month-old son, Caden. We've got a love triangle. Ms. Marsak is here today because she desperately needs to identify Caden's biological father. She's looking for some clarity in this messy situation. One, Ms. Marsak, you admit to sleeping with two men at the time you conceive your 11-month-old son, Caden. Yes, Your Honor. Now, you state you're here today for the sake of your baby's future and desperately need to identify his biological father. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. O'Malley claims Ms. Marsak was unfaithful during their relationship, giving him every reason to doubt his paternity. And last but not least, we have Mr. Mestipi, who had a one-night stand with Ms. Marsak and believes that he could be Caden's father. Your time together, so you have every reason to doubt paternity. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Mestipi, you were a one-night stand, admittedly, but claim you have created a loving bond with Caden, and you would be devastated if he's not yours. Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. Marsak, please tell us, how did you get yourself in this situation? Well, Your Honor, um, at the time of conception... Ms. Marsak spills the beans on her complicated relationships with both Mr. O'Malley and Mr. Mestipi. Apparently, she met Mr. O'Malley while working together, and sparks flew, but wait, there's more! She was married at the time, and Mr. O'Malley became the reason for her divorce. He is actually the reason me and my ex-husband are divorced. So, at some point, you were sleeping with Mr. Mr. Mestipay as well. Right after me and Mr. O'Malley were together, um, I had uh, met Mr. Mestipay at a party, and we were drinking, and one thing led to another, and we were in, ended up intimate. And Mr. O'Malley confirms their affair and admits to reconnecting with Ms. Marsak on Facebook years later. Things got so intense that she even moved in with him. But guess what? It didn't work out, and she went back to Illinois. Can't say we didn't see that coming. I had sent her back to uh, where she's from. Three weeks later, she she Facebooks me telling me that she's pregnant. So I asked for proof because she had lied to me numerous times before and her word isn't really trustworthy, at least for me. So about a week later, she sends me a letter. It looked home major on her. I really wish I still had the picture of it. So I presumed it wasn't true. Now it's Mr. Mestipi's turn to share his side of the story. He claims that Ms. Marsak reached out to him on Facebook, dropping the bombshell that she might be pregnant with his child. Do you remember if you used protection? No, I did not use protection. Okay, so it is a real possibility that you could be this child's father. Yes, I was uh, constantly thinking it could be someone else's, but I wasn't too, too for sure, because I didn't know her that well. It was just a white night stand. It only takes one time, but... That's right. That's right. All right, folks. This is where things get really interesting. Ms. Marsak decides to move in with Mr. O'Malley, hoping to find some stability for her and baby Caden. But guess what? It only lasts for two months. It wasn't uh, that I could possibly be the father. It was that I could be the father. I get that. And because there was a possibility that you could, you did what you should do. Yes, Your Honor. And you were there. Ms. Marsak reveals that she left Mr. O'Malley's home and moved back to Illinois to be with her other children. But here's the kicker. She still believes that Mr. O'Malley is Caden's father. The drama just keeps on coming. Ms. Marsak, when you look at your son, who do you really think the father is? Mr. O'Malley. I, I don't see it, Your Honor. I really don't. 
The little guy has blue eyes, I have brown eyes. Light hair, I have dark hair. I honestly don't think he's mine. Mr. O'Malley, on the other hand, seems skeptical. He doesn't see the resemblance between himself and baby Caden, and he even questions Ms. Marsak's motives. Can you blame him? This couple has some pretty wild trust issues. She allowed Mr. Mestape to believe that he was the father. So Mr. Mestape, did you believe you were the father or just thought you were a possibility? I, I just thought I was a possibility. Okay, so he thought he was a possibility. I was under the impression that he had thought that he was the actual father. But hold on, folks. Mr. Mestipe steps up and claims that he has been there for Caden since day one. We've got three potential fathers, one adorable baby, and a whole lot of unanswered questions. Who will be the lucky winner of the paternity lottery? We're about to find out. Stop here. How many, how many packages of diapers have you bought? You were only there for two months, and we bought two months' supplies, so two boxes. You bought two boxes of diapers. You were only there for two months. It doesn't matter. You were only there for two months. What do you want you, me to do? You want to sit there and say and raise him as your own, and when I leave, you, you don't decide to send money. And him. when you left, you cheated on me when you went right back to Illinois. All right, folks, it's time for the moment we've all been waiting for. The DNA results are in, and Judge Lake is about to reveal the true identity of baby Caden's father. Will it be Mr. O'Malley, Mr. Mestipe, or someone completely unexpected? Marsak v. O'Malley, Mestipe, pertaining to whether Mr. O'Malley or Mr. Mestipe is the father of 11-month-old Caden Marsak. It has been determined by this court that the biological father is Mr. O'Malley. Oh. Oh. Big relief, Your Honor. Big relief. Finally I can got feel the that truth. across the room. What do you want to do? Ms. Mellerson needed clarification about the particular man who might have fathered her child. She brought two men to the courtroom who she claimed might be the possible fathers, but there was more to the story. Mr. Williams, who happened to be one of the men, claimed she told him he was not the father, but for some reason is now changing her mind. Ms. Mellerson, you've entered the court with a wounded heart because uh, there are two different men who may have fathered your 11-month-old daughter, Chelsea. Now, Mr. Williams, you claim the plaintiff initially told you that you were not the father, yet now she claims you are. Yes, Your Honor. Here's the tricky story of how Ms. Mellerson found herself in this mess. She was in a relationship with Mr. Merritt, who also happens to be one of the potential fathers. One thing led to another, and she found herself getting intimate with Mr. Williams. Mr. Williams in 2012, um, and from there, it just began with our relationship. Your Honor, it was never a relationship. It was a sexual relationship, sex. first of all. We had sex all. twice, and we your never... Honor, he is lying, but, because number one, Your Honor, your Honor this man right your Honor, here, for I don't know what you're trying to cover up for, if, for your For it to be a relationship, if, it, if we was in a relationship, ask her how many times have we ever left my house? The courtroom quickly turned into a Jason Statham-style fight scene. Another lady was sitting right beside Mr. Willems, and Ms. Mellerson claimed he was sleeping with both of them at the same time. She even went on to say the lady was present when she got pregnant. I am 22 years old. Stacy is 38 years old. I don't know what he's trying to cover up, but baby, trust and believe me, you were have, sleeping with me and her at the same time. I have no problem. So don't even go I, there. There was Hold no on. way. Your Honor, I, Your Honor. Please, Your Honor. Your Honor. Your Honor. I'll let you Hold say on. what you Your had Honor. to say, so let me There's speak no up where I want to speak. There's no way I could have been sleeping with both of them because she just moved up here from Florida. Now, Ms. Mellerson finds out she's pregnant. Who's the first person she tells? As you would expect, Mr. Williams, when she called him, she didn't particularly say he was the father. She told him there was a high chance that her ex-boyfriend could be the father as well. Mr. Williams wasn't going to take any chances. He wanted a DNA test. When I called him on the phone, I told him that it was a possibility of my ex being my child's father. I told her, okay. Okay, if it's a possibility, okay, we need to get a test and everything. She said, okay, what I'll let you know when I have my doctor's appointments. After she mentioned that to me, she didn't even have the same number. I never knew where she lived at. I continued. So how was I? And she never called me either. When the call session didn't go as planned, Ms. Mellerson decided to go to his house and tell him to his face that she was pregnant. When she got there, she gave Mr. Williams a bunch of papers, letting him know she was pregnant. But after giving her a long stare, he started to doubt that she was actually pregnant. When I went to his house, he had this stupid look on his face, like, wait a minute, is she really Your pregnant? <laughs> Even then, you know, I'm like, you know, if you slept with me, just take it as there is a possibility of you being my Even child's after, father. Mr. <laughs> Williams, what do you have to add? Even after so she contacted me to let me know that she was pregnant. And I told you that she told me that when she go to the doctor, she'll let me know. 
And if I want to come to the doctor's appointment, that's fine. Now, the supposed boyfriend with whom Ms. Mellerson was sleeping had been quiet for a while. Judge Lauren finally turned to him and asked if he had been told about the pregnancy. Guess what? Ms. Mellerson told him six months into the pregnancy that she was going to have a baby. To make things worse, she didn't even tell him he was the father. And said, oh, uh, I'm pregnant, so you might be the father. You so know. five or six months pregnant she showed up at the door? Yeah, ma'am. She hadn't called you to tell you she was pregnant all no, that time? No, ma'am. She said she, but he, she, said she erased my number and or whatever, so... Here we go with this know. phone again. No, I did not have his number at the time. Judge Lauren was about to lose her temper. Ms. Mellerson was trying to play the victim in the courtroom, and trust me, Judge Lauren was not going to have that in her courtroom. She didn't spare her one bit while giving her what I would like to call a scolding session. I'm sitting here is to help you resolve that mystery. So while I'm trying to figure out why is this man in doubt, and you chirping off on the side so I can't hear him, if this turns out to be your daughter's father, I at least want to understand where is he coming from so that in the end, I can help figure out how to incur it. You could see it all over his face. Trust me, Mr. Merritt really wanted the child to be his. He claimed while he was growing up, he didn't always have his dad around and he wanted a different case for the child, even though he might not be the father. I really didn't have my father in my life like I wanted him to, like he was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So I felt like, you know, the child, every child deserved to have a father and a mother in his life. Yes. I just want to, you know, be there for her regardless, even if she's mine or not. And you feel like when you look at her ba this baby, this beautiful baby, that she looks like baby pictures of you. Well, we are finally at the last junction with these guys, and it's time to determine which of these two men will go home as the father. Would it be Mr. Williams or Mr. Merritt? Let's find out. If Mr. Williams, you are not the father. Mr. Merritt, you are not the father. Well, I know who it is. Ms. Mellerson, you could have saved I'm, I'm us 100 all. Just like in the previous case, two men were brought to the courtroom as potential fathers. Ms. Petty wanted to know who the real father of her child was, but something was interesting about this case. The first man in question was her boyfriend, while the other man was her ex-boyfriend. Mr. Bell, the ex-boyfriend, was certain that he could not be the father. Ms. Petty, you say you grew up without a father and claim you don't want the same for your daughter, Alea. Yes, Your Honor. Now, you've asked the court to DNA test two men who may be her biological father. And Mr. Ball, you're one of the two men we've tested and state you do not believe you fathered the child. Now Mr. Ballet had quite a lot of doubt about being the father of her child, and trust me, he had a valid reason. He claimed he could not be the father because while they were both intimate, she was also sleeping with her boyfriend. The only reason I started messing around with her was to get my son. You have an older child together, so you were messing around with her to get him. The way you gotta get it, I mean, the way you could get your kid is if you, uh, all she want is to be, so you gotta sleep with her. You know, all you got to do First is sleep of all, and first wait a minute. Okay, so, first of all, so, I would like to say... Mr. Bal was saying some mind-blowing things in the court that shocked the judge. He said any time he wanted to stop sleeping with Ms. Petty, she would threaten him and say if he stopped, she wouldn't allow him to see his son anymore. Yeah, I tried to stop messing with her, but every time I stopped messing with her, she would go ahead and bring, like, like well, you can't see your son and all this. You ain't going to be able to... He, I don't want him to come and over there because And when you refer to Peter, unsafe. that's Mr. Daniel. Yes, Mr. Daniel, my bad. Your contention is that he he never really got over you and still kept coming yeah, around. That's, that's, but you have to tell this court. You do admit that you also were having sex with Mr. Yes, Daniel. Was. Yes, I she was. was. Another piece of evidence Mr. Ballet dropped into the courtroom to back up his doubt was the fact that his name was not signed as the father on the birth certificate. It was her boyfriend's name that was there, so he wondered why not put my name if I'm the real father. If you ask me, it makes a lot of sense. I see here on the birth certificate you did, in fact, give her Alea Mr. Daniel's last name. Yes. Did you yes. think Mr. Daniel would just be a better father or you just felt like he was your only option? He he asked me to give my daughter his last name because he knew no. all the lies stuff I was no, telling me. Because they was, Everybody they was knows everything he was they telling me together for two years about how he didn't want to take her. And they were sleeping with each other unprotected. Be. It was about time Judge Lauren hit the nail on the head and asked Ms. Petty why she had another man's name signed on the birth certificate. With tears in her eyes, she told the judge that Mr. Bal was not a father figure. She even said he never gave her daughter a chance to get to know him. Why is it that you give her another man's name? Exactly. You didn't want her to... Why you didn't give her your last name? Let her speak. And I'm asking I'm the questions. 
sir. Miss Petty, I ain't tell me what last. you're feeling. I'm feeling like regardless of the result, he don't care no way. He don't want to be around for her. He didn't even give her the chance like, to get to know him. Well, Judge Lauren had listened to their rants for far too long. This time, the only person she wanted to listen to was Mr. Daniel, who happened to be the boyfriend in this situation. And guess what? Mr. Daniels also had doubts about being the father of the baby. We were at the hospital, and there was a situation where I looked at her and figured out that she has a little possibility to look like AJ, which is her son. And I basically was like, okay, well, it's just... Well, that could just be because she's both of their mother. Yes. Okay. That's why I say, okay, never mind. It so you erase that out of your yes. mind. You're at the hospital and you're having this moment and the baby's here and everyone's happy. The beautiful thing about Mr. Daniels was that he was a sweet man. Even though he had serious doubts about being the father, he was present throughout the entire process of having the baby. He never missed a single appointment, but Ms. Petty just had to mess things up. She had been having a sexual relationship with Mr. Ball as well? She told me before because of the situation when we got together. Okay. So she told me that there was a one time but where they But through the entire pregnancy, you were there. Every you time. were there at the birth? Yes. You cut the umbilical cord? Yes. I stayed up all night holding her. When she went, I gave her rest. So I end up holding her. Judge Lauren could not stop herself from becoming enraged at Ms. Petty's action. There was no sparing her this time because somehow she found herself mixed up between two men and she was lying about it. So you, and <laughs> I'm gonna tell you like it is, you use that as an excuse to continue to sleep with the man you really wanna be with. Now tell me I'm wrong. You're not wrong. So when's the last time you and Mr. Ball had a sexual relationship. Last week. It was not last week. It was not last week. The truth was coming out, and Mr. Daniels was telling it all. He didn't just catch them while they were texting each other and saying the nastiest things. He even caught them in the act while they were kicking it in bed. What a way to break his heart. So, not have you ever I caught them together in person? Yes. Or is this, this is a sexting, texting thing? Matter of fact. Oh, yes, you said. Did you find evidence that yes. they were together? I came home, and... I see his car outside, so I walk around to the window, I look in there, and all of a sudden, I'm looking around to see what's going on. Well, the suspense is finally over, and the hassle of who the dad of their child is about to be revealed. It's been a bumpy and funny ride with Mr. Mr. Bale and Ms. Petty. All eyes are on the judge as she unleashes the truth. Get ready, paternity folks! And whether Mr. Ball or Mr. Daniel is the biological father, Mr. Ball, you are her father. He do not deserve to be the father. Honestly, oh my God. He don't. He's sentimental, boy. Ms. Kelly was about to have one of the most memorable moments of her life as she was about to get married, but there was a problem. She had no idea who her father was or what he looked like. She appeared in court to have two men tested and was hoping she would leave that courtroom with her questions answered. Ms. Kelly, you are here to determine if one of two men we've tested for paternity is your biological father. You hope to leave this courtroom today knowing your father's identity so he can walk you down the aisle at your wedding. Yes, Your Honor. Now, Mr. Duncan, you are argue that Mr. Kelly's mother was in a relationship with you and another man during the time you dated. The journey to finding her father had been on for quite some time. When she was much younger, her mother wasn't even the one who raised her. But here is where things get crazy. As she grew up, she noticed the color tone of her grandparents, and it sure didn't match the one on her skin. When I was two, my grandparents started raising me, and I noticed that I was different because they're white and I was brown. My grandmother used to get awkward looks, and she would say stuff to people and sometimes kids gave me trouble at school. And when my grandfather, he got killed when I was 10. So not having that male influence in my life, I started to act out, get in trouble at school and all kind of stuff. Mr. Duncan, one of the potential fathers, was very open to having her around him. Even Ms. Kelly couldn't deny that she enjoyed spending time with him and his wife. Mr. Duncan even claimed he was beyond excited when he was contacted that Ms. Kelly was his daughter. Him and his wife, he's always wanted me to be his. And so Mr. Duncan, when you were contacted, were you surprised in disbelief? What were your thoughts? Oh, I was happy. I was proud. I was proud, you know, to have a look, you know, to have a child. Did you question it? Did you have doubts? I might have had a little doubt because uh, at that time, she was living with a guy. Talk about a man hoping for something. Mr. Duncan was very emotional about Ms. Kelly. He was praying deep down in his heart that Ms. Kelly would end up being his daughter. To make things even better, Ms. Kelly really wanted the same thing. Right now a day, and I've been hoping 24 years. I've been hoping the same thing and I've been I only had one mustard seed that's all I got is one mustard seed about this little girl around but I tell you this right now 
I hope to God this is my child. I do. That's beautiful. That's beautiful to hear, sir. Miss Kelly, you remember, of course, the relationship because you introduced your daughter. Yes, ma'am. Miss Kelly's mother was not denying that she made mistakes when she was younger. But one thing she made clear to the courtroom was that she didn't want her daughter to live her life without knowing the truth. So she told her there was a chance she might have two men as her possible fathers. So my mom and my dad raised her. And like I said, when my dad got killed, it really disturbed her. She's seen everything happen. So she started being rebellious towards my mom and everything showing out in school and all. And I knew it was time. My mom never wanted her to know who her father was. And I knew I had to. She, she's mine, regardless. And I went to her house one day and I took and picked her up. And I took her to town and I said, Disney, I said, you have two possibilities of father. Mr. Duncan said he had an encounter with the other man, who Ms. Kelly was living with at the time. That conversation didn't particularly go so well, but that didn't change his will from wanting to have Ms. Kelly as his daughter. It even made him love her more. That she ain't my child because all them years, all them years, people would say, uh, that ain't your child. She said, that ain't, that ain't your child. But deep in my heart, every time they would say that, it's like somebody juking me. It's like somebody's juking, juking, juking. You know, never once, not even one time did I ever turn my back on that child. I always knew that this little girl right here. Aside from the fact that people were telling him Ms. Kelly wasn't his child, he recalled a time when Ms. Kelly's mom told him to his face that she wasn't his daughter. They were arguing, and it just slipped out from her mouth at least, so he recalled. But Ms. Kelly's mother claimed she couldn't remember that ever happening. You started telling people that's not his child. Yes, ma'am. You said you told other people she wasn't his child. Did you ever tell him directly? Well, Your Honor, it's been so long, I mean, I really can't recall. Do you ever recall her telling you directly yes, that's Your not Honor. your child? Yes, yes, Your Honor, I do recall her what happened? telling me through my face. And uh, I knew that uh, she could be telling the truth. And so then people would come up to you on the street and say, she said that's not your child. The moment of truth was finally here, but the air is thick with uncertainty as to whether their relationship was going to be saved or shattered for good. It's time to see what the future holds for them. I hope you guys are ready. Mr. Duncan. You are not her father. I'm sorry to you both. I know how much you wanted it. Miss Kelly, how are you feeling? Confused still. <laughs> That's understandable. All the cards were on the table for Mr. Hill. He was furious because he claimed he paid a lot of money in child support for a child he now believes to not be his. Ms. Harris, with a smirk on her face, was beyond certain that he was the father of her child, and the DNA results were going to prove just that. Mr. Hill, you have petitioned the courts for years to get a DNA test on Ms. Harris's 18-year-old son, Taman, because you've paid more than $50,000 in child support, but you're not certain he's your child. Yes, Your Honor. Your previous petitions were denied, but there is now reasonable doubt and testing has been ordered. Judge Lauren was initially confused by his story. Mr. Hill claimed he was paying over $50,000 in child support for a child he believed was not his. When asked why he was then having doubts, he let the cat out of the box and said Ms. Harris cheated on him. Why don't you think he's yours? Basically, she had um, sexual intercourse with somebody else. Excuse me, All right. Excuse me. Okay, so hold on. What, Ms. Harris? He's a liar, a total liar. I've never been with anyone in the three years that we were together. Why would he manufacture these doubts? Mr. Hill was talking like a loose cannon and he just wasn't ready to shut up. He had so much to reveal to the judge. Aside from the accusation about Ms. Harris cheating on him, he said she told him on several occasions that she actually slept with another man. She told me that she had slept with somebody else. So in she person told you. And on the phone. So you're saying she told you she slept with somebody else. On numerous else. different occasions. All right, but the point is, is when you were in your relationship that was supposed to be committed. Yes, Your Honor. She had sex with somebody else. Yes, Your Honor. She told me numerous times. She basically, uh, when I was with my um, ex. Well, the judge had heard enough of Mr. Hill's rants, and she wanted to hear Ms. Harris's side of the story. Trust me, she had some truths of her own to reveal. She claimed that right from the moment she gave birth, Mr. Hill was beyond excited to be a father. It felt like his greatest wish had just come true. I got pregnant, first in the delivery room. He was so happy talking about he didn't want to sign a birth Excuse certificate. Me, Your Honor. Jumping, hollering, let I her got speak. a baby. Let her he speak. He cut the, um, the umbilical cord, everything. 
We was at the store one day, he's hollering across the store, I got a baby, I'm bad pampers. Look at my baby. Excuse he's me, Your Honor, that's a lie. So you're saying he this acknowledged is the, first, the child yes, and he this believed the, first the mom time was I've his. I've ever, I've never. One thing was for sure, Mr. Hill and Ms. Harris weren't going to agree on anything in that courtroom. Mr. Hill went on to tell his story about how he went to different courts to try to determine if he was the real father of her son. But Ms. Harris came in like a storm and called him a big fat liar. Nowhere to be found. Child different when we go to different child support. I used to pay $300, maybe $400 every two weeks in child support. She never showed up. I tried to get a DNA test. She never showed up. So I tried over years and years and years trying to find out if Tamar was really mine. But you paid the support. I paid the support. Did you acknowledge Tamar as your child? Before the case could move forward, Ms. Harris's mother intervened and she was furious with Mr. Hill. She wasn't in the mood to listen to anything the judge wanted to say. All she wanted to do was vent her anger and frustration to Mr. Hill in the courtroom. You need to be ashamed of yourself. You, are you blind, Chris? Are you blind? I'm not blind. Do I you have see two him, kids Chris? That look exactly like do me. you see him, Chris? Well, your daughter shouldn't have your been. Your other with children do not look like you. You need to have them on paternity court back in front of this judge because he looks like you, they don't. After hearing so much from Ms. Harris's mom, Judge Lauren decided she was ready to hear from the little boy who found himself in a mess created by his parents. Sadly, he never felt the presence of Mr. Hill in his life. Not one day went by where he didn't wish the situation was completely different. It made me feel kind of bad because. I see everybody else with their father and I don't. It's all right, babe, take your time. You said everybody else had a father. And I just feel like he should be there. He should have been there my whole life. I should remember him to my life and I don't. On one of those occasions when Ms. Harris's son tried to reach out to Mr. Hill and have some type of bond with him, the reply he gave to her son would leave anyone who read it in shock. It was so bad that Judge Lauren couldn't hide her anger and disgust at Mr. Hill. I guess I'll just keep it for myself. Tell your mom I would like a DNA test. Because it was and that... It, <laughs> you wrote this message up. to this child? This You wrote this message to your son? Because it's the fact that every time I did reach out to him, try to develop a relationship with him. He wanted to spend time with his friend instead of me. Excuse me, it's even if you were disappointed. Well, it's finally time to unveil the truth after so many lies and deceptions. The day of reckoning is finally here with everyone itching to know the truth. Are you ready to find out? I bet you are. So take a deep breath because here it comes. Mr. Hill, you are his father. Can I say I something? I think you owe my son an apology. Excuse me. That's what back of what I'm finna do. Tomorrow, I apologize for not being in your life, not doing what I needed to do. Ms. Robinson and her mother are a thousand percent certain that the defendant, Mr. Rollins, is her father. But Mr. Rollins is also a thousand percent sure he didn't father Ms. Robinson. He says that her mother had a lot of men back in the day and she just lost track of how many men she slept with. Those are strong accusations, Mr. Rollins. Very strong ones. Let's see how they make Ms. Robinson feel. So Ms. Robinson, explain, how has the feeling of denial affected you? You know, it affected me real bad. Like, I feel like that he wasn't responsible to even say I'm his daughter or not. And so for 24 years, you've had to deal with this. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Palmer, all her life you have been telling her that Mr. Rollins is her biological father. Yes, ma'am. Yes, You've yes, never ma told her any other man was her biological father? No. This has been going on for 24 years. Well, the good thing is that for good or bad, we will be seeing the end of this saga today. And you've never gotten any level of recognition or acknowledgement from him? No, I haven't. So, Mr. Rollins, you do not believe you are Ms. Robinson's biological father? No, ma'am. You say you're 1,000% 1, sure? 1,001. So, Ms. Robinson, as you grew up, were you told his name? As I knew him as Doobie. But you knew his name? Mm hmm Oh, well, it's done then. If Mr. Rollins here says he's 1,001% sure, then he's 1,001% sure. There's nothing to do about it. But that's not really how it works, is it? We've got to do the DNA test, and we've got to actually get evidence. Um, when I was nine, um, I was on the school bus. My mom and him was on the porch. So when I had got off the school bus, I went upstairs, seen them talking, went and put my book bag down, ran back, talked to my mama, and she was. I asked her, who was that man? She was like, that's your father. So I was like, are you sure? That's my father. And she was like, yeah, that's your father. So, Your Honor, I ran down the stairs. He was in the apartment next to our was putting in furniture. I was like, well, it's... Wow, that's cold. 
Ms. Robinson says that was how Mr. Rollins behaved at every point in her life, and that's really horrible. If Mr. Rollins had slept with her mom, he should know that there was a chance he could be her father. He should have at least accepted that chance and maybe told Mr. Robinson that there was a possibility, but he never did that. That's not right. Mr. Rollins, I do need to ask you. Yes, ma'am. Do you remember this encounter with a nine-year-old little girl? Yes, ma'am, I do remember the encounter. Tell me what you remember. She was just kind of observing me. When I was looking at her, and I said to myself, and I also said to Ms. Palmer that we had no resemblance. Why would you keep engaged? She, you should have to have resemblance of you for to be your child. Ain't nobody resemblance of they, all their parents, she right? She had to have the same blood, nah. man. We finna okay. see the data. Okay, we will. Well, Mr. Rollins then tries to quiz Ms. Robinson by asking her how she knows he's her father. He asks if she's a DNA tester, and the young woman doesn't reply at all because that's a nonsensical question, and Judge Lauren agrees. Hold on, okay. Mr. Rollins. What you not gonna do? What you okay. not gonna do not is gonna be prosecute. a... prosecutor. No, what you not... No, you not gonna prosecute her because you don't have no law degree. It like You're not a prosecutor. Me, what you like are, this is the issue here. Uh -huh. Ms. Robinson is in court because she's trying to find her father. That's why I'm And here. you are in court because you admittedly slept with her mother. Is it? Yes. Yes. Right. 20 and, plus years ago. And she is 20 plus years old. And that's the point here. No one is accusing Mr. Rollins of being the father on zero basis. He slept with Ms. Palmer, and as a result, he could be Ms. Robinson's father. And that's the point of this entire exercise. Anyway, Mr. Rollins here isn't done asking questions. In fact, he has one for Judge Lauren. But let me ask you this question, Your Honor. Please do. Out of the truth and everything, will the table turn on her? The well, mother, no. that's who I'm talking about. No, 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 listen. You know, now, you know, I'm, I'm looking like the dead beating. The You're girl. taking on a level of guilt that nobody is really putting on you. They're telling their side of the story, and you're telling yours. You can't... No, you said persecution. With persecution, well, there's guilt. Don't bring up work. Hold on, honey. This is my business. Exactly. You don't walk into Judge Lauren's court and try to win a verbal contest. That just isn't going to work. Now, why is Mr. Rollins so sure he isn't Ms. Robson's father? If she really took time out to pursue the other people that were involved with this... Why no other people involved? Mr. Yeah. Rollins, who were the other people involved? I'm not a name dropper. You don't have to drop the name. But I have associates. What kind of associates is these? I want to know. I want to understand these associates. Who are you talking about? What, what do you know? The thing is, I can't prove it right now. We've gotten this argument so many times here in paternity court. Mr. Rollins is so certain that Ms. Palmer was sleeping with other men while she was with him. But for some reason, he cannot prove that argument whatsoever. He says that he knows these men personally, too. Of course, Ms. Palmer vehemently disagrees with this. Your Honor, I only had one boyfriend, and me and him had broke up when I had a two-night stand with Mr. Rollins over there, and that's the only one. And when it, when it came to his test, he was not the father, so I know he's the father. Okay. I'm 100% of So that. you've already had the other man tested. Yes, Your And Honor. he was not the father. Yes, Your Honor. And so that's why you know Mr. Rollins yes, is Honor. in your own estimation. Yes, ma'am. All right. Oh, things are getting real now. Ms. Palmer here has already tested the other one possibility and says Mr. Rollins is the father because he's the second only possibility. That's a really strong argument if Ms. Palmer here is telling the truth. But Mr. Rollins has some other objections, you see. The classic, your feet don't look like mine defense. When he came there, he, he they was in the kitchen talking, and he gonna, uh, say, let me see your feet. Your feet do not look like mine. And he said, he said, your mama been sleeping with a lot of men. And, uh, and my daughter said, no, you don't talk to my mama like that, about my mama like that. So, you told her, let me see your feet? Yeah. Why, Mr. Rollins? Well, I'm not a genetic specialist. Well, he sounds like a genetic specialist to me. At this point, you kind of feel that Mr. Rollins has got to be the father. His arguments don't add up, he has no evidence of infidelity on Ms. Palmer's part, and Ms. Palmer's evidence actually sounds good. Let's see who's telling the truth. Mr. Rollins here, or Ms. Palmer, it's time for the DNA test results. Mr. Rollins, you are not the father. <laughs> well, you are not the father. It was just my mistake, hey. but I know I didn't sleep with nobody else. Well, we know that that's a lie. When I read the result and he was not the father, you weren't even surprised in my mind. So that says to me that you knew all the while that there was at least one other possibility. Mr. Barron and his wife are in court today to solve a 25-year-old paternity question. Mrs. Bradshaw here has been claiming for those 25 years that Mr. Barron is the father of her child and has been forcing him to pay child support for her child. Mr. Barron says after he gets the DNA results here, he will return to court to sue for $21,000 in what he calls fraudulent child support payments. Mrs. Bradshaw says she is sorry 
sorry for misleading her son all these years, but she is absolutely certain he is Mr. Barron's son. Your son will join us in a moment, and you are hoping today's DNA results will finally give him his full identity. Yes. Now, Mrs. Barron, why do you believe Miss Bradshaw is lying about your husband being her son's father? She's a liar. Oh, I've been with him for 25 years, no, and I don't it? have how, any children how, to him. How could you be with him for 25 years when my son is 25? Because. We were not with him at the same time. Ah, so there is the catch. Mr. Barron thinks he cannot be Ian's father because he is sterile, and he knows this because he has been with his wife for 25 years, and she has not gotten pregnant even worse. Well, that may be true. Another thing that may be true is that the problem with fertility is with Mrs. Barron, not Mr. Barron. Never conceived a child with him. No, oh, ma'am. I sure did. With, I yeah, sure did. That has nothing to do with him. Yeah. But just she cheated on him. She, oh, and you didn't. You always had to be with the Hold guy that I second. was with. Hold on one second. Now, Mrs. Barron, I'm trying to understand from you. Why do you believe she's lying? I mean, this has been a long-standing accusation. Your husband's been paying child support. Why? Because she's a liar. She told him that it was his child. Oh, okay. So Mrs. Barron has had a child outside wedlock. Suddenly, her claims of Mr. Barron being sterile start making a great deal of sense. And it seems that Mrs. Bradshaw and Mrs. Barron have some unfinished business they would like to get to. He believed it. He took responsibility for it. And then she blames three different men. The, the father it can only be so, one father. Ms. Bradshaw, you admitted that you lied. Why did you lie about it? I was ashamed of it. I'd like to one. know why, too. I was, I was ashamed Because you, him you and put my husband in jail one. twice. No, I didn't. For he this did. child. Yes, yes, you did. did. For your and your Yes, you did. He was the father. That is a lot to unpack. It seems Mr. Barron actually went to jail for child support twice. Mrs. Bradshaw says she only did this because she thought Mr. Barron was going to take a DNA test. At least now we are getting somewhere, and Mrs. Barron and Mrs. Bradshaw will surely not shout at one another again. What? That is exactly what they did. Yikes. Dad even said that he would pay for the DNA. And that's what I thought he was going to do. He was well, going to request well, yeah, DNA. Because he, he you the tricked paper. him into it and no, said, oh, no, I no, love you. It's no, my son. No, he wanted to be with me. Well, I, I was saying not because he's married to me. I told him it was over. No, I told you. Oh, yeah, right. Really? All right, all right. Yeah, ladies, no, and yes, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. So you thought he was going to take the DNA test. Yes. You see, Mr. Barron and Mrs. Bradshaw used to have what we call a swell relationship. But then Mrs. Bradshaw started cheating on him. And then he said it was over. And that, ladies and gents, is why Mr. Barron refused to do the DNA test. He refused to prove the child was not his because he believed it wasn't his. That is strange logic and is exactly the sort of logic that lands you in paternity court. Found Re out she slept with my brother. No, I didn't. Yes. No, I didn't. Yes, She's you did. She's dating his cousin. She's dating my cousin. Now? You're keep dating his cousin, cousin, right cousin right now? Yes. But we'll just keep it in the family, but I'm the bad I mean, girl because I pay, help pay for his child support. Hopefully they took it out is social my son. Food, and she's saying it's a southern man's kid. Why didn't he go for SSI? He was dead. She could have got SSI for 18 years and wouldn't have to worry about it. Wow. This is one tangled up family. Mr. Barron is saying that Mrs. Bradshaw cheated on him with his brother and is now dating his cousin. Is there something in the air Mrs. Bradshaw is breathing? Really? His cousin? You ever tell your son that anyone else could potentially be his father? I told him what Mike was. Yeah, he took her to a dead man's grave and said, hey, this is your son. Miss <laughs> Bradshaw, I need to understand this. You took your son to the grave. Yes, the I deceased did. man that you told him yes, I did. was his father. And I was wrong. I was totally wrong for doing it because I knew that it wasn't his. Well, here is the thing. We can understand that. Well, at least I can. But the issue is, why should we believe anything Mrs. Bradshaw says when she lies so blatantly about something so serious to her child? Remember that at this point when she was doing her cemetery runs, Mr. Barron continued to send child support checks and she continued to cash them. But I didn't want to share my son. I did not want my son around them. That's I did. I've seen him twice all his life. This is the lady oh, yeah, I married and this Eve, is the lady I want to be with. House in 96 and seen the sun. Yeah, the only time that you yeah. went, when we split it's up, up, then you loved uh, him again. Up, all right, right. Mr. Barron, so even after all these years that you've paid child support, in your heart, you have doubt. You don't believe you're his father. Yes, you don't. That is a lot to take in, but here is a simple judgment. If a man is paying child support regularly, then he needs to be able to see his child regularly. For some reason, Mrs. Bradshaw refused to do even that. And now we are here in paternity court to determine who the father of this child is. But first, we have got to hear from Ian himself. Specifically, taking you to a deceased man's grave and telling 
you that that was your father. Yes, ma'am. What do you feel? How are when you? When I first found out that the guy that's dead wasn't my father, I was just devastated. I was very angry with her, and I just had so many emotions build up, mm -hmm. and I kept after her about who my father was because Don was paying child support. I never got to see him. You can see how hurt Ian was to get the news that the man he thought was his father really was not and was the other man paying child support. He says he even went to the dead man's parents' house and they then told him that the man could not be his father because he had gotten close to Mrs. Bradshaw after Ian had been born. That is horrible. And the only way to solve this is to check out the test results. Mr. Barron, you are not the father. You okay, Mr. Scott? Just confused again. I don't know where to go from here. Your son says he doesn't know where to go from here, and you're the only person in this room. Mr. Clark wants to know whether his four-year-old daughter, Jalionia, really belongs to him. He says he is unsure because his partner, Ms. Probst, works as an exotic dancer. He says that he knows she has been cheating on him due to the nature of her job. And if Jalionia is proven to be his, he will be seeking sole custody. Ms. Probst, on the other hand, admits that she cheated on Mr. Clark around the time of conception and is unsure who Jalionia's father is. But she insists that that does not mean she is a bad mother. Complete lie. You're not living a lie. Yes, I am. I don't believe she even has a clue or idea who the father name is. So yeah. take me back a little bit. How did this relationship get Get to this point. You're together and you're happy. Well, this is how it happened. I was in Job Corps. Okay. I was working to get my uh, CNA, nursing license. Okay. I met her at a party. She's a very fun, you know, loving girl at that particular time. Took it easy, fell back, I went to school. And how did she become a totally different person, you may ask? Well, she became a liar. Mr. Clark says she started cheating on him, but Ms. Props says that does not really matter because she admitted to cheating. To cheating, cheating which is means lying you and, asked, lying is cheating. and it's I the admitted same thing. it. That's not being a liar. I don't even have to look at you to even say that. All right, so Ms. Probst, let me ask you. Now, you admit that you were in a relationship with Mr. Clark, but then at some point you cheated. Yes, and Your lied. Honor. I did not lie. You yes, cheat, Your you Honor. You lie. It's the same thing. Yes, Your Honor. Um, basically, how this happened, um, you know, I had went to a party with a friend. Well, that is not very nice. That same night, this happened around the time of conception as well. So Mr. Clark's complaints are very valid. Ms. Props brings a calendar to court where she maps out the conception date for her child. During the week of conception, she slept with the other guy once and slept with Mr. Clark six times. Okay, so on September 1st, indicated in green, you slept with the other guy at the party. Yes, ma'am. In yellow are the dates that you slept with Anthony. Yes, ma'am. They told me my conception so date was around was that time. So Jay was born in June. Yes, ma'am. So as we count back, that first week in September would be the week of conception. Yes during which time you slept with both. Mr. Clark insists that that was not the only time that Ms. Props cheated on him. He also claims that she was not always so forthcoming about her trysts with other men. In fact, he says sometimes he had to find out about them himself. If that is true, then Ms. Props could definitely be hiding more. You know, we had intercourse one time. She took a shower. I went through, you know, her phone. I found texts to men. I found pictures of herself, texting photos, sending those to other men, and even that talking about. That was made up. I no, it wasn't the made photos, up. Y'all, I even have proof right here, I right the now. Photos, but like but I was I saying, didn't. like I was saying, I, I even but... know that she has texted men of sexual favors for money. Those are things that I know for a fact. That's not true. Your Honor, I have, I have so, pictures right here. I have evidence. Now, you would not believe what Ms. Props' defense is. The photos are shown in court, and they are very risque and revealing. But Ms. Props says she only took those photos and sent them to men because she wanted to see if Mr. Clark was going through her phone. Does she really want the court to believe that? Uh, a couple months before that, we So had... you had set them up with these photos? Yes, ma'am. But a, a couple That's months a before that, I had text... I was texting a guy from a club that would come out who was one of my money men, and he had seen some text... One of your money? Money man. Yes, ma'am. One of the guys that come and see me frequently at the club that pay me good money. So he had seen where I had been texting this guy and he took it upon himself to call this guy back. And well, this may sound odd, but maybe you probably should not get into an exclusive relationship with a man if you are in a business where you literally make money off seducing other men. Maybe that is something you should do if you don't want to end up in paternity court. Just a thought. Now, Miss Probst, is exotic dancing just the Stripper. career of your I'm choice? An exotic dancer. No, Your Honor. Um, um, I had a rough childhood. Me and my family never got along. My father was never around. I just want for my daughter to have the father that I never had. I had to do what I have to do 
to be able to provide for me and my children. The money is going to be spent the same but, but, way. Wait, now, how many children no, do you all have together? Two. Two. Well, one can sympathize with Ms. Propst's childhood while realizing that her work environment will always make her partner doubt her loyalty, and perhaps they should. Anyway, it is time to check the test results and see who is really lying here. Mr. Clark, when it comes to four-year-old Jayliana, you are not her father. I'm sorry. Don't don't come over. I, here. I'm sorry, but you already knew before it, we no, it came. Doesn't, it, does, it, doesn't, it doesn't that matter. You might not it doesn't, be her it doesn't father, matter. Though. I'm going to continue, you know, providing for my child. She doesn't have one. Without me, she doesn't have one. I would not allow, you know, allow, you know, some guy from the club or some guy from the street, you know, pick up where I left off because nobody can do that. Mrs. Mahan is in 10,000 worlds of hurt. She says her ex-fiance, Mr. Shrum, cheated on her while she was pregnant, broke off her engagement, and now is denying paternity of her one and a half year old son, Blake. Mr. Shrum, on the other hand, does his best shaggy persona by saying it really wasn't him. He claims that Ms. Mahan cheated on him and slept with another man during the conception period of Blake. Therefore, he is fairly certain that he is not Blake's father. Now, Ms. Mahan, why are you convinced that the defendant is the father? Your Honor, I am extremely upset with this man. I have tried time and time and again to convince him that he is the only man I had unprotected sex with when my son was conceived, but he refuses to believe me. I've been trying for the past That's not year. That's not I've been trying for the past no. year and a half to convince him that this is his son, but he denied. Wait a minute, Ms. Mahan. What do you mean by he is the only one you had unprotected intercourse with during that period? Does that mean you slept with other men, but it was protected so it does not matter? Is that what it means? Anyway, Mr. Shrum also has his own shocking story to tell. It's kind of hard, like I said, I deny the fact because like I said, you know, one night I woke up and she was next to me. I go out to the living room and she's underneath the covers with her ex. Okay, let's, let's, let's start from there. You were living together. Yes, ma'am. And in a relationship. Yes, yes ma'am. Ma You're in the bed one night, wake up. She's not there. And you do what? You go where? I go out to the living room to see if I can find her. And she's underneath the covers with her ex. Well, those are a lot of words, Ms. Mahan, and you could really just have said no. So did it happen or did it not happen? Because I would regard finding my fiance under the covers with her ex as a good enough reason to call off the wedding. And yes, that would be good enough reason to doubt the paternity of any child she might have at that moment. Anyway, things are even more complicated because the so-called ex was living with them both at the time. You walk in and they're under the covers. Yes, ma'am. Doing what? Snug I don't even know. I was nowhere near him. I was on one end of the couch. He was on another. I had my blanket and he had his. That's not, they were, they weren't, they weren't even watching TV. They were face to face. I felt like I, you know, I was betrayed. You know, like I said, was she ready to be with him or me? You need to pick which one you need to do. Now, when you moved in with her and the ex was already living there, did you feel some kind of way about that? Oh, yeah. Okay, we have seen loads of weird living arrangements here on paternity court, but this seems like it exists in a league of its own completely. Apparently, Ms. Mahan did not want her ex to leave because he had no place to go. So Mr. Shrum joined them in that house and for some reason is shocked that Ms. Mahan may still be seeing her ex. Is it really that surprising that someone living with their ex might still be sleeping with them? Is it? How quickly after you met and got together did you get pregnant? It was, it was about a month after me and him got together and he moved in with us. I never knew she was pregnant. That, oh. that is a lie. I called you and I told you that no. I was pregnant the day I found out no, I was pregnant. You, you told me that you were pregnant after we split up after I called your mom's cell phone, you were at the hospital. So you were pregnant and you're saying that you told Mr. Shrum from the get-go, I'm pregnant. Mr. Shrum said this never happened at all. Ms. Mahan recounts this story very vividly, but Mr. Shrum just does not remember. Somebody here is lying and the story gets even worse. We had gotten into a big altercation. Uh, my, it was hot one night. He was complaining because it was hot. I told him to quiet down. My mom had to get up the next morning to go to work at four o'clock. He started hollering and screaming at me. I slapped him on the arm and told him, you need to quiet down. You're going to wake up my mother. He turns around and bites me. I scream and my mom comes well, in the room and tells him he needs to get out or she was going well, to call the cops. Well, if you wanted to, uh, you know, like I said, you know. Did you bite her? Yeah. Well, that is not a great enough reason to actually bite someone you are dating, is it? Mr. Shrum says he was just defending himself and he was within his rights to do exactly that. Anyway, that day, Ms. Mahan's mom had Mr. Shrum removed from the house. The question here is, did Ms. Mahan cheat on Mr. Shrum? Well, we know that there was some cheat but it may have not been on Ms. Mahan's side. We made a promise to each other to get married the day after my 18th birthday, and he does not give me any prior notice that he is leaving me for another woman. He had been sleeping with this woman for two no. weeks after we were still together. Is that true, Mr. Shrum? I was with another woman, but like I said, we were broke up at the time. During this time, you're suggesting that she was sleeping oh, with other oh. people during the time of conception. Yes. 
Is this true, Ms. Like Mann? Did you sleep with anybody? Ah. Ms. Meehan here is sticking with her story. However, she says she had slept with her ex before she and Mr. Shrum got together and did not sleep with him during the conception window. There is only one tested and trusted way to confirm that story, and it is by checking out the DNA test. It has been determined by this court that you are the father. Booyah! <laughs> Tell me what you feel. It's okay. Can't believe I wasn't there for him. You have regret. That's honest. Do you hear him? Yes, I do. Because I know he wants to see you. What would you want to say? I would love him. I'm sorry for denying him. Is it okay if Mr. Shrum meets his son for the very first time in my chambers? Yes, Your Honor. He may. Mrs. Watts is here on behalf of her deceased son, Alex. Alex passed away a few months back, and Ms. Watts is here because she doubts that he fathered the defendant's 20-month-old child, Caden. Ms. Cheryl, on the other hand, is absolutely sure that Alex fathered her child. I was called, received a phone call to come to a shooting where they said that my son was involved. When I got there, I didn't know at the time that my other son was there as well. Um, my two sons went to visit a friend who had some type of altercation with some gentlemen prior to my sons coming to visit their home. And when my two sons got there, they were ambushed and murdered. That's so painful. It's the worst pain anyone can experience. Coupled with that, Mrs. Watts now has to live with the paternity doubt she has over Kate. Every time you've seen Alec, you've seen me, you've seen him, you've, like we were always together. We plan on having a family together, having that future together, but fortunately it was cut short. How long? How long have, were you in the relationship? Three years on and off. Okay. And so Caden is 19 months old? Yes. And so he did get to know his father. Miss Cheryl says that Alex never doubted that her son Caden belonged to him. She says they had a father and son relationship, and they were like two peas in a pod. She even has a video that shows the nature of that relationship. Yeah, just like you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you mad at me now? You wanna annoy me? Mm -mm, I don't care. Mm -mm, mm -mm. <laughs> So in your mind, as you see that, it's your feeling that he accepted this child as his own. Yes, Your Honor. He did accept Caden as his own. Hold up. What does she mean by blood test or not? Does that mean that there could be some reasonable doubt? No. I'm saying that because, you know, everybody has said their words and everybody feels some type of way about when it comes to Caden being Alex's child. I say blood test or not because to Alex, he didn't care to get a blood test. He, to him, Caden was his child. Well, the issue was my son had went away for some time and before he went away, he told me that Alexis was pregnant. And I guess this was during the time that they were on their breakup. Oh, and this isn't hearsay. Mrs. Watts has evidence of this text message and tenders it in court. This means that Ms. Cheryl just lied in court when she said that there's no possibility that Caden belongs to another man. That was my response because I told Alex I did have a one night stand with somebody and cheated on him. I told him in the beginning, um, I want to say a week or two after I had the one night stand, I took an at home pregnancy test and I found out I was pregnant. I know it takes a little longer for the at home pregnancy test to detect the pregnancy, so I did say I did and know because I know what I did and Alex knows what I did but I also do believe he is because he you know I know what happened and I know at the time when it happened. Is it just me or does Ms. Cheryl here look a little flustered? Anyway the point is that regardless of the feelings Alex has for this child there is a real reason to have doubt. I see a secret he not he did not want nobody to know about the pregnancy. Or Why is that? He Alex was a secretive person he did not like people in his business and at the same time I didn't tell my family I was pregnant either so we both decided to keep this a secret. He was a private person. And so you can see how your son may have said, let's keep this to ourselves. Mrs. Watts says that Alex came to her house with the baby a few times, but he never for once mentioned that the baby is his child. However, he cared for the baby like it was his. Mrs. Watts says that Alex had a daughter and told everyone that the daughter was his, but he didn't do the same for Caden. I didn't I tell nobody when I was in labor with Caden, Your Honor. And so Alex wasn't there either? No. No, yeah, and Alex didn't see the baby for two months. So what's interesting is in the court papers, I see Caden's birth certificate. On the birth certificate, there is no father's name listed. Caden's last name is not your last name, and it's not Mr. Stewart's last name. Okay, but why didn't she give the child Alex's last name if she knew that he was Alex's child? Well, Ms. Cheryl says that she just wanted to be sure and get a blood test first before changing his name to Alex's last name. That's not a very good explanation. Anyway, let's hear from Mrs. Watts' husband, Mr. Watts. Yeah, we always 
always hung out and did stuff together, you know? And he never talked about no babies or nothing. It was always, it was like, it's, all this is new to me this year. Oh, wait, so you... I don't even, he's never even met me before. Like, we've I, I never don't know even you. met face-to-face -face for him to be able to say, have a say-so on this. I'm talking well, about no. what Alex said. He never said nothing about no baby. If somebody got a child, they gonna say, well, this is my baby. Here, mama, look, look at my baby. Wow. So it seems Alex also had some paternity doubts. Despite this, Ms. Cheryl still claims that the child belongs to Alex. The only way to get to the bottom of this is to check out the DNA test and see what it has to say. The percentage of relatedness between Ms. Lita Watts and Caden is 0.006%. You are not related. Do you know where Caden's biological father is? No. Mr. Runliss always believed that he couldn't have children because of a lifelong medical condition. However, that opinion changed when his partner had Ireland, a baby he now claims is his miracle baby. There's only one problem with that claim. The partner in question, Ms. Taylor, claims that it breaks her heart, but she is certain that Mr. Runliss isn't the father of her baby. Not in my heart. Tell the court. Well, he has a, uh, like, I don't know what it's called. It's called a yeah. hypospadias. Okay, can you describe that for the court? All it is is it's where the hole in the penis is in the wrong spot. It's, okay. Instead of being a up top, it's more towards the bottom of the head. The, the, the actor just said that it's a big possibility that I may never be able to have kids. So Mr. Runnels may be able to have kids, but the chances, according to his doctor, are uncertain. Nobody really knows for sure. That's a tough spot to be if you want to have children. Interestingly, Ms. Taylor was aware of this and has dated Mr. Runnels for over four years. She says they tried for over two years and nothing happened. In fact, they'd planned to adopt a child if they couldn't have one. And then, suddenly, Ireland happened. Family, you know, get out in the world. We had an unprotected set, and we tried for so many times to have it, nothing was working. So then I decided to go and do something different. And wait, what did you do? You have to be specific I, in court. I had went and cheated on him with a guy I had actually known for a little while. Oh, what did she tell you, Mr. Runleys? Let's see where this story is going. What did she tell you, Mr. Ronald? Her her original story when I found out, because like I said, it looked like this is a miracle baby to me. You know, this is um, bottom line is this don't work. If if this is not my kid, I, I gotta go. There's there's not no more to it. When you found out you were pregnant, who did you tell? The other guy you were pregnant or did you tell Mr. Ronald? I told them both, actually. I told the other guy on Facebook that I might be pregnant, it could be his baby, just, and I told him too. But did you tell Mr. Runnels you cheated? No, ma'am. No, I did not. Mr. Runnels says that on her Facebook, he found a message from Ms. Taylor telling the other dude that the child might be his. And that hurt him so bad that he felt like he had a heart attack. He says even right now his knees shake when he thinks about it. Then you know, I was there. And so at 22 <laughs> weeks, you find this out and yet you still stick by her. Yes. And you stick by the baby. Yes. Sure. And you are there. Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> and are you there when baby Ireland is born? Yes, Your Honor. I was at the hospital. The other guy was not by our choice, but um, I requested to have an, I requested to have a DNA test done at the hospital. Especially as he thought Ireland was his miracle child. Ms. Taylor says she didn't want the DNA test because she doesn't want Mr. Runnels to leave her. That's a weird thing to say when she cheated on her partner with another man and then told the other man that he could be the father of her child. Despite this, Mr. Runnels still loves Ireland and says he will keep on being her legal father. And you know, she legally, I'm still on the birth certificate and I'm not gonna be taken off of it unless she decides to take me off of it. So Even you though are I her knew that, you know, there was a possibility still in my heart that I knew there was a possibility that she wasn't mine. Mr. Runless obviously feels very deeply for this child and would want nothing more than to confirm that she is his. But that's not how it goes in paternity court. You could want a child to be yours with all your heart and then the child ends up not being yours. It is horrible. Of exactly what was going on. You know, in my heart, knowing for so long that I've never had a kid, I've been trying to have a kid since I've been 18 years old, and you know, it's just something I need to and know. So a lot is indeed on the line. Anyway, Ms. Taylor says she's convinced that Mr. Runless isn't the father because she sees a lot of the features of the other man in her baby's face. I always get just... worried that he's going to leave me because you never know, you know, he's been there this whole time. But you now fear that Mr. Runnels will leave. Yeah, because when I... Uh... Oh, no, it's going to happen. I mean, if, she, if she's not mine, I got to go. You know, it's just bottom line. You positive. You, you're, you're done if this is not. Yes. You cannot stay in this relationship no. if Ireland is not your biological it, dog. It just, it'll cause too many problems. Wow, this is really a bind. The man who wants to have the child may not be the child's father, and the man who doesn't want the child could end up being her daddy. Aside from that, is Ms. Taylor really trying to tell us that she could see this man's features in the ultrasound pictures of a baby? Really? Is that even possible, let alone likely? Well, we only known each other for like almost a year. 
And then we, he came over one night and we went to hang out. We hung out and it led into more than that. A week later, I took a pregnancy test. They both came up positive. And I told him not to get his hopes up on the first one because I didn't want to have him go thinking, oh yeah, I'm having a baby, you know, and then okay. I go to the hospital and I find Before out Before we get into that, that's kind of funny how Miss Taylor says that he came over. It shouldn't come as a surprise, but Miss Taylor here doesn't sound so trustworthy. If she can cheat on a man who loves her like Mr. Runless does, what can she not do? I was told that it happened outside of my house in a park somewhere outside. That's, I did. I just told him that. You did? Yes. But did. in actuality, this man Absolutely. was in, in my your house, home. In yes. my bed. Since we're telling the truth now. Right. right. The truth. Right. Was this really a one night stand? It or really was. did it happen more than once? It was honestly my right hand to God. It was only one time we ever, one time only, and that's the only time we ever had it. And then. Here's the thing if you are coming to court, try to get your story straight. Even if you're lying, try to line your lies up. That way, you won't have to backtrack all over the place like Ms. Taylor is doing now. At this point, you might even hope the child isn't Mr. Runless because he doesn't deserve to be with someone like her. But then again, Ireland is his miracle child, or so he says. Match his, it's like, but uh, me and like him said, had brown she eyes. Looks just like me. Look yeah. at her. But she Jen, had... my big old elephant ears. <laughs> and this is Ireland. You believe she looks like you. 100%. So, Miss Taylor, does she also look like the other guy to you? She, uh, yes, Your Honor, she it, does. We've heard a lot. It's time to get to the bottom of this matter and see who is Ireland's father. Is it Mr. Runless or is it someone else? Mr. Runnels, you are her father. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, it is a Made me nervous baby. for a minute, but that's... <laughs> it really is his baby. Great. It's a miracle, baby. Ms. Gates says that a day before her son passed away, he told her that he wasn't the son of the defendant's three-year-old daughter, Alexis, and 16-month-old son, Nicholas. Ms. Rembold, the defendant, insists that the plaintiff's son, Nicholas Gates, is indeed the father of her child and says that the DNA test will prove the case. It's not the dad. I am here to represent my son, Nicholas, as because he can't be here. I remember him telling me point blank the day before he passed away that he was not the father of Nicholas. But yet he told me differently right before he died. He had told me that he didn't care regardless, that he felt in his heart that no, he, he was the father of my child. Well, this seems pretty straightforward. Ms. Gates says her son told her one thing and she's using this as a basis for the paternity doubt. Ms. Rembold, on the other hand, says she was told another thing, and Ms. Gates is absolutely sure her son believed that he wasn't Nicholas's father. Deep down. I could tell he was being very honest. I could see the sadness in his face when he told me that. Also, Mr. Gates and I were also fighting at the time we had a rough relationship, so Mr. Gates was gonna say what he had to to his mom. What would he say to you? that he felt that this child was his. And even if the child was not his, Mr. Gates would still stepped up and he would have been a father. Of Mr. course Gates he would was step a good up. Father. Well, Ms. Remble doesn't sound very convincing. Why would the departed Mr. Gates even have a paternity doubt in the first place? There must have been some reason for that, right? To you at all, or was there doubt? Yes, there was some doubt, Mr. Gates, with Alexis. If we would argue, he would say, go find your daughter's father with Nicholas. I had found out I was pregnant, and he told me he would not be able to live with knowing I was pregnant with another man's baby. And then right before Mr. Gates had passed away, Mr. Gates had told me that he felt in his heart that Nicholas was his child. It's not what he told me. That doesn't answer the question, though. Anyway, let's move on. What exactly did Mr. Gates tell his mother before passing on? He said, that baby is not mine, and that's all he said. And, and he was just very distressed. And he meant Nicholas? Yes. What about Alexis? When Alexis was born, Your Honor, she was very dark complected, and he had every doubt possible that she was not his due to the circumstances of them breaking up, getting back together. Ah, so there's the crux of the issue. Mr. Gates and Ms. Rembold broke up lots of times and got involved with other people, presumably without protection. And that's why there are even paternity doubts at all. When I first met Mr. Gates, he was in a relationship. I was engaged to get married to somebody else. The day we met, we just started off as friends, and that same night, Mr. Gates came back to my house, and he moved in immediately. But I didn't expect me and Nick to move as fast as we did, and it did. Okay, it's starting to heat up. Ms. Gates clearly doesn't like Ms. Rembold at all, and that might be motivation for her to embellish what her son told, or might be motivation for her son to lie to her about who he thinks is the father of Ms. Rembold's children. I was older than Nicholas, but... To the older woman, Cougar. So how soon after you and Mr. Gates started your relationship were you pregnant with Alexis? 
Um, it was Alexis that there was doubts. Might have Mr. Gates' relationship was very rocky. Mr. Gates would love the attention from other women, and he thought he was slick and would always get caught cheating. No wonder there are paternity doubts. This happened before Alexis was born, and also happened before Nicholas was born. That's why there are so many questions over who the father of those children is. You did. Yes, she did. If you did sleep with the ex during the breakup, why is it that you don't agree with the fact that there could be doubt? I mean, I, I don't blame you for having doubt. When Alexis was, we first found out I was pregnant with Alexis. Again, me and Mr. Gates were cheating on each other. And I had told him I was pregnant. And at first he was like, is it mine? Ms. Rembold says she slept with her ex around the same time she conceived of Nicholas. But she argues that it was protected, but the protection did break. Are you serious? I so I didn't even know that. Ms. Rembold, you do understand that if the condom breaks, you've basically exposed yourself. I, I had also, Your Honor, I had ran into the other gentleman that could have possibly been Alexis's father. I showed the other gentleman the picture. He says, no. Well, that's true. But despite the jokes, this is a really important matter for Ms. Rembold. She's lost the father of two of her children, and she's unfortunately alone in the world. I've lost everything. He used to take care of the kids, and I work. I've had a move since the past thing. I lost everything. So today's results truly mean everything to you because having that clarity will hopefully encourage Ms. Gates to help with the children. Unfortunately, Ms. Rembold's feelings cannot wish the paternity questions away. It is still there, and Ms. Gates still feels the same way. My son loved her so much that he would watch the kids knowing she'd be going out with this man. That's how much he loved her and loved those kids. But, and it killed him. So you moved this guy into the house with you and... They, and they both stayed. Okay, and so which <laughs> one were you intimate with during this time? Both of them, Your Honor. That's just nasty. It's time to round this up and see who the father of the child is. Since there's no blood card for Mr. Nicholas Gates, the DNA test will be to see if the kids are genetically related to Mr. Gates' surviving parent, Ms. Gates. It has been determined by this court the percentage of relatedness between Ms. Robin Gates and Alexis Gates is 98.6%. The second result is a bit more complicated. Judge Lauren says the results are so complicated that she has to call the lab to see what's going on. Between Ms. Robin Gates and Nicholas Rimble is 64.6%. What does that mean? We then compared Alexis and Nicholas to see whether they were full or half siblings. And the results of that siblingship test showed with a 99.99995% likelihood that Alexis and Nicholas do indeed share the same. Ms. Walker says before her son Delante passed away, she had doubts that he was the biological father of his supposed son, Delante Royal. She says that her son also shared those doubts with her the day before his passing. Ms. Royal, on the other hand, claims that her son is indeed Delante's child. Well, Your Honor, my son was tragically murdered. He, uh, the day of his passing, my son left something behind with me, and that was his doubt. And I am here today to get the doubt taken care of. Her child, her son, I don't know if that's my grandchild or not. Ms. Royal says that there is absolutely no reason to doubt that her son is Delante's. She says she has been completely loyal to him, and no one else can say that they could be her son's father. In my family, we love her son. We, lo we love them, but we just can't go all the way. We can't be 100% there. I remember one day, um, to fuel his doubt, they got in an argument. He seen text messages between her and a guy around the time when she conceived, and so he, that, he doubted. So if that's true, it means Delante had some valid reasons for thinking that this child belonged to someone else. Here is Ms. Royal's version of events. I'm, I'm pregnant. I don't have nothing else to do but sit in this house. So when he came in the house, I started going through his phone, which I didn't find anything. So after that, he caught me. Yes, he did. He said, if you think I'm cheating, you can get your stuff and leave. Um, well, I was trying to get my stuff and leave. I got my phone. He grabbed my phone to see who I was calling. It was an older dude. He, I called him my brother. He just a person I looked up to also. Ms. Walker says that's not how it was portrayed to her. She says she was told that Ms. Royal was intimate with this person. And it wasn't just a matter of calling her shorty. He embraced that child. He kissed the baby on the forehead and everything. She asked him, she said, um, Delante, do you want to... DNA test now. Right in the hospital. Oh, yes. He laid his head on my shoulder. He said, he said, Mom, I think I'm gonna throw up Aww. when he see the baby. And so when she asked him, did he want a DNA test, you know, he looked around, seen her family members, he told her, 
No. Oh, that's understandable. So in front of everyone, he didn't want to embarrass her or seem disrespectful. But later he said that he needed a test. Ms. Royal says she knows nothing about this because she asked him twice and she's sure he didn't want one. Mrs. Walker then asks why he didn't sign the birth certificate if he was so sure he was the father. Your Honor, Your Honor he didn't sign it because he didn't have his ID. When we kept telling him he was being irresponsible. He, that was not my fault. He even got his dad's first name and middle name. Okay. I would have gave him his last name, but he did not have that ID. So that was not my fault. So do you believe he would have signed that birth certificate oh, yes. if he had yes. brought his ID? Yes, sir, and I believe it. Do you guys really believe that? Or do you believe Delante was just making up excuses not to sign that birth certificate before a DNA test? Anyway, it's time to round this up and find out if Delante is truly the father of Delante Royal. It has been determined by this court between Ms. Monique Walker and Delante Royal, 99.99% no! yes! period. You are related. Yes! Period. Yes! Period. Yes! Period.